Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kevin McNulty, and I am here again to speak to you live. I trust that you will catch in. I am going to be doing this daily now for quite some time, and uh, I won't be over uh, uh, overemphasizing the amount. I like to keep it within so that the nuggets that you hear will will reflect on you throughout the day and will hold on to you as you hold on to them, and they can transform your life. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about uh, making the possible and doing the impossible. And I believe that we can do that together, that you can understand that everything is possible now in your life. If you are listening to me and you have discovered Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you recognize that, then you have the possibility of the impossible happening every day of your life. And so I would like you to maximize your potential and by listening right now. And uh, no one ever used the word possible like Jesus. Uh, listen here in Mark chapter 10, verse 27. He said, for with God, all things are possible. In other words, there is a God element that's in this world. And if you tap into that, you will discover from the moment that you have a Savior, from the moment that your past is washed away, through because he took the sin, he took the shame, he took the guilt, he, he paid the penalty on a cross, and from that moment when you receive that, then the new possibilities for your future. I love the fact that the first things that I ever learned about myself when I became a Christian was one, my past was gone, and two, my future was secure, and everything in between is the impossible that we've been reaching out to do in over 65 nations. And I don't know how many thousands and thousands of people have heard us. And uh, we are continuing on. We have so many new countries that are just waiting. And uh, I just want you to be going there with us. Uh, I'm going to need the resource to reach uh, Cote d'Ivoire in Africa. It's a very expensive project. Uh, but it's a nation that is in need, and there's another religion that is tr coming by that's trying to overtake it. And also, there's a situation of the dullness of, of, of Europe, and uh, with only 3 to 4% of Europe going to church, uh, we need to do something, because a lot of people here, our ancestors are from the Europe, and that Europe is now falling away. But I believe God has spoken to us, and in the last... Uh, two years, we have had some great success in Belgium. And send send us to Belgium this year because uh, we're in communication with them and they desperately need us. So uh, I want to break through into uh, the 17 nations of, of, of uh, Europe through Belgium. And uh, there's offices there of over 160 nations. And I believe that we can make a difference. So there, go there with us if you can. If you can believe all things are possible, in Mark 9, 23, it says all things are possible. If you have faith, you will say to this mountain, move and nothing will be impossible unto you. That's in Matthew 17, 20. So this idea is not new. This idea is throughout scripture uh, uh, that, that this, uh, this attitude of I'm not settling for what I have. I'm going after what I want. I'm not settling for what has been dished out to me in the past. I'm looking towards what's for me in the future. And uh, as I think about that, I think about this this young boy who uh, he's about, oh, he must have been about uh, 18 years old, blinded one eye in the city of Ufa. Every day we preached and then we prayed for the sick. And there were testimonies of people getting out of wheelchairs, testimonies of cancers and, and leprosy leaving. There are amazing testimonies of, of uh, back injuries that were healed, foot injuries that were healed, all sorts of things that were happening. And uh, But this young man who was working as an usher in that meeting there in Ufa, he was, he was praying every night for a blind eye that he had. He had a blind eye, born with a blind eye. And uh, he, uh, he, he went all those three weeks praying and nothing happened. But you know what? He didn't surrender. He didn't say, well, I guess it's just not the will of God that my eyes see. No, that's not what he did. We did not know this, but in his heart, he was not content 
to, until he got his blind eye. And he rode a bicycle across Siberia to the next city where we were. And uh, we went by, by train, we went by plane, and here he is going by bicycle across the, that, that tough territory in Siberia. And, uh, and, uh, and he, he, we, I didn't even know that he arrived. We're in the middle of another big campaign. And uh, he again volunteered to be an usher. So he just volunteered. He did what he knew he could do. And uh, <laughs> one night after about two weeks of preaching, he stood up on the platform and says, I have a testimony. I said, what's that? He goes, my blind eye is now, I can see through it. And I said, blind eye? You had a blind eye? He said, yes. Now, you got to understand something, that a blindness in the, in, in the annals of history, uh, only three people are registered bl that, that were blind that now can see. So it's not a situation in the hospitals that has been overcome. But here, we've been able to see this overcome by the creator of the eye, God himself. And he can, if he created it, he can heal it. He can fix it. He can make it see again. And uh, we have wonderful experiences of that. But it always is surprising when someone's blind eye opens up. And so I said, well, how did you get here? He told me where he was from. He said he bicycled. I said, well, that's such a long ride just for us to go by train and then by plane. It's such a long ride. How did you get here by bike? He said every day. So he just got on his bike and uh, rode every day until he got tired and then rested and kept kept going. And I said, well, I can't, it's hard for me to believe this. Is your bike here? And he said, yeah. And I said, where is it? And he pointed where it was. I said, bring that bike up here. And it was a little child's bike, a children's bike. And I was shocked. I said, you rode this bike? And he said, yep. Yeah. I said, what did you do at night? He goes, I slept. And uh, then I, when I wake up, I just keep riding. And uh, so here he is. He's unwilling to give up. Are you unwilling to give up? Is there a problem in your life that you've just settled for? Is there a, a, a fear or a worry or a concern about your future that you've just settled for? I have good news for you. As we start this thing, all things are possible to those who believe. With the things with, which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18, 27. So listen, it might look impossible, your future. But it's possible with God. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, so along this subject, uh, I've written a number of things. And uh, let me grab some, some glasses here to see. Uh, I, I wrote about horses and how horses are treated. You know, wild horses, they are going to buck you off. They're gonna, they want to stay uh, free. And they are going to, anybody who tries to ride them is going to kick off, be kicked off. But you can, and obviously the Cowboys of America have figured out how to train horses so that they can do their work on those horses. Uh, if you do not control, and the reason I talk about wild horses is because if you can't control yourself, you cannot control your future. And, uh, you, you know, basically it takes somebody who's trained to actually train a horse. It's somebody who's done it before and who knows how to control it that can, so that it can be ridden. And why do you want horses ridden? Well, a century ago, that was the common thing, is that people would ride on horses. And uh, that's where, how, they got to, how they got where they wanted to go. Or they would attach their wagons to horses. And so, so in using that, I, I, want to know that, I want you to know that there's a call on your life. You're not here by accident. Everybody born in this earth was born as a miracle and born as a representative and as a child of God, as a son or a daughter of God. And I want to let you know that there's a purpose that came with you when you came into this earth. And, uh, and, and so I want you to understand the importance of yourself, that you, are, you have that conviction about yourself. You might not understand that purpose, but I want you to know it's important. Why is it important? So it might seem small to other people, but it's never small to God because there's only one of you. And you have that call and that purpose on your life, but it's your joy, your honor to discover that purpose and then to make that happen in your life. And he will, obviously, because you're not here by accident, he will uh, bring the resource, bring the people, bring the ideas, bring the place together in your life so that you can look back and say, Surely there is a God. And I want you to know that. 
And I want you not to, I don't want you to, well, to collapse. I don't want you to have a failure. I don't want you to end up uh, 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 in the ocean with no rudder and not, no steering and driven by the winds and driven by the seas. Uh, I don't want that because God put in you that you can go somewhere, you can, but you have to control yourself to get there. You have, you, you, you're like on that wild horse. You've got to learn how to, to direct it. You've got to learn how to kick and you've got to learn how to, how to, to, to hold the reins on that horse so that it doesn't go wild on you. And so it is. You've got to learn how to hold the reins on your life because you, you need to decide what is my purpose? What is my desire? What, what is the, the plan for reaching that desire? And, and you got to start talking to yourself because you are on a destiny. That, 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 that desire is not just a nice idea. Make that desire a destiny for yourself. And you can do that through understanding and understanding the, 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 the Bible, understanding the words. God gave you words and those words are spirit and they are life. And those words produce a life in you. And that's the you, you gotta that's what you gotta harness yourself to. That's where you have to ride on that on that that horse. Ride on those words, ride on those ideas that will bring you to where God has put that, that desire, that dream in you. That's not there by mistake. And it's, you might, it might look impossible, but it says here in the word that with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. I hope you're enjoying some of this. We, are, we're, we don't have lots of time. We are live with you and we will be doing this. I'll be doing it daily. Uh, not only the live, but I will be doing sessions that you can get later uh, we'll, we'll be making recordings because I've got to go out of the out of the city, out of the state again. But I'm going to leave behind a lot of communication, a lot of of training, a lot of teach. I believe that through the technologies of today, you can be trained into your fullness of potential. That's what I want to see in my life: is to see other lives reach their full potential. And I believe I can do that. Help that. Here's another thing that will help you in that potential. Uh, if you study uh, what Jesus said about himself, then you can also study what the word says about you. In Acts 22, 14, then he, a prophet, said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to, now listen for closely what, what you're chosen for, chosen you to know his will. I like that. A lot of people walk around, they don't know what the will of God is. To know his will, to see the righteous one. Hallelujah. When you get a model of a righteous one, then you can be the righteous one to the people around you. See the righteous one and to hear his own voice. In other words, you didn't join a religion. You have connected when Jesus came to live in you through the uh, redemption that you said, yes, Lord, uh, to that redemption, to that price paid on that cross. And you said, yes, Lord, I believe. When that happens, with, with your, when your heart, you, you say it, when your heart, you believe it, and you, with your mouth, you say it, it says that you are born again. In other words, you get to start over again. And in that start, he said, see the righteous one. That righteous one has come into you and made you righteous. Righteous without sin, without shame, without guilt, without fear, without lack. He has come in to be that in you. And so he says this, the prophet says, know his will, See the righteous one. In other words, you see yourself different because now you become the righteous one because he lives in you. And to hear his own voice, we're not talking about just doing religious acts, but hearing and picking up the voice of God himself because you will be his witness to all people whom you have seen and heard. You have a plan and a purpose for your life to be his witness. So I, I'm, I'm going to stop right now on this subject i want you to think about that in first john 5 14 and 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will and his will is written so you don't have to figure what is that will it's written uh, he if we ask anything according to his will he hears us know his will see the righteous one hear his voice and be his witness and, and uh, in other words whatever what's his witness whatever happened to you Tell somebody else about it. Whatever good thing is in your life, give it to somebody else who needs it. That's the witness of Jesus Christ. We love you. We'll stay in touch. We'll be doing this every day. And uh, we'll have a lot more. When you don't see us here live, there's a lot more for you to get. 
from Christian Adventures International or McNulty Ministries or TentNation.com, those three things, I, I want to let you know that we also have books that are great books uh, that I want you to, to I want you to have. And uh, The Twelfth Chair is my greatest book. I want you to have that book. Talk to the office about it. And uh, I want you to also get involved with these big, these big plans for 2019 because we've got to penetrate more into Europe and we've got to keep that door in Africa open along with 50-50-50, the 50 states of, of, of the USA. It's the USA and they have to come alive because they are the hope. They have been the hope of the world for some time. And so we need to come alive in the USA and Leslie and I can do that. We, had, we know how to we have over 100 tents moving across Eurasia, and we're going to put 50 tents across America, and we're going to raise this nation up to do what it has done over the years and to keep doing it, not just in their neighborhoods, but in the world. We love you. Be a part of this. Help us do it. God bless you. We love you. Kevin and Leslie McNulty.